morning. Well, it's actually 10.30 on Thursday, and I am going to start some Odos con pollo. I am half Cuban, so I was raised with black beans and rice, some picadillo, Odos con pollo, some plantains, and all that Cuban deliciousness. So uh, I have rice and I have chicken, so I decided Today I'll do oros con pollo. I don't have everything that goes in it, but it's still going to be delicious, but it's one of those things that has to sit for a little while because the broth has to come to full flavor. So I have my pot ready, and this is the broth that I made uh, with the chicken. So I'm going to take my chicken out first and see, as you can see, the beast behind me. Hi, beast! He always has to be there when I'm cooking or into stuff. So last time I was at the grocery store, I was really excited. I got some leg quarters for $10. I think it's 10 pounds. So I'm going to put three of them in the bottom of the pan and then pour the broth over it. I have eight cups, but I may do six cups. I don't want it to be so full of juice that when I put in the rice that it's more like a soup. And these are huge. Look how big they are. I think I'm just going to use two because that is huge. There's two of those. And you could do this with previously cooked meat or the best. This one's small so I'm going to do one more. Uh, boneless, skinless. There we go. So I have three of them in here. Let me wash my hands, and then I'm going to pour this over because this is going to add to it. So what you want to do, mine has grease on top of it. I'm going to get a spoon and cover and throw that away. Here you go. That's why when you make broth, you always put it in the fridge so all the grease goes to the top so you can easily throw it away. I mean, there's still going to be some in there, but that way it's not as much. And if you're doing it in a mason jar, then sometimes it'll seal it, which is nice because it'll last for a long time if it's sealed. Okay, so let's pour to cover. Okay, well, uh, it looks like I'm going to need all of just about. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and do all of it. Let me get out one extra seasoning because the seasoning is really, really important. It's in the Mexican section um, with all the Goya stuff. And it's in a little box and it says con azafran. So you want saffron. Saffron is key. So it's going to turn this whole thing red but that's okay that's what you want it to do so before this step for making real real odos con pollo you want to have a sofrito first and cook that down if you don't have a sofrito then you could do peppers and onions and see that little boy right there he's gonna get in trouble hold on beast no get down because the key is saffron. So I found this at a local um, Chinese grocery store. So I use this. It has similar stuff in it, but it also turns, turns it red and it tastes just the same. Clearly I have a lot because I use it just for that. And also when I make chicken noodle soup, my grandmother used to use the saffron as well. So I'm just doing it like this to flavor. And then you always, I know there's sodium in there already, but depending on the salt of your broth, add a couple teaspoons. I'm gonna give that a stir and get this chicken cooking and flavoring the broth. See how beautiful red it is? Imagine that your rice coming out of that. So I'm going to cook my chicken and I'm going to get back to you 
after it's done because I gotta take it off the bone because you don't want stuff in the bone on the bone when you're making chicken and rice. I just pulled out my chicken. It is mostly done. I'm see the steam coming off of it. I'm going to let that cool before I put it back in my stock. And I'm gonna let my stock boil for as long as I can. I want it to simmer and get delicious. And when I add the chicken back, I will let you know. From those um, chicken thigh and drum pieces, this is the meat that I got. And here, you can see it's bubbling, it's on low, which is exactly what I wanna see. Oh, it smells amazing. So I'm going to pour this in here and all the juice. Sorry, you missed that one. <laughs> but I just poured it in. I'm going to give it a stir. And just let it simmer. I'm going to let it simmer until probably when Brian comes home. And then I'm going to add rice and peas. And that'll be dinner. Um, yeah. But this is all the excess. And I'm not going to waste this because I used all of my chicken stock, so I'm going to make more chicken stock. I actually have two crock pots, one big, one small. I use the bigger one more. My mother-in-law got this one for me, so I use it all the time. It's just easy. So I'm going to dump everything in here. This is just what I used to throw it in because it was easier. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. I don't have any veggies, like um, any root vegetables besides potatoes, so I'm not gonna throw those in. I'm gonna throw in two bay leaves, a little bit of oregano, because all I um, I want to add much as much flavor as I can, since I don't have root vegetables, because normally that's what I add in it. Okay. That's good. And now, this is what I had it in before. So I'm just going to use this and fill it up with water. It's not going to hurt anything. So yeah, definitely I save any of my chicken bones. I've done it once with beef, it didn't end up as good. Um, the crock pot is the easiest way to do it because then it can sit for however long. Sometimes I do it for two days and it's so good. It extracts everything out of the bone and it makes the darkest stock ever. So this is going to be more like a broth. Okay, so I want to get it as full as I can. I need to because even though there was salt in that, the broth is not going to have a whole bunch of salt. And I don't like to add too much until later. Because you can always, you can always add more, I mean, you can always add more salt, but you can't take it away. So when I filter out all the herbs, it'll, it'll be just as clear. So that's how I start it. I'm going to put my lid on it, and then I'm going to move you so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to hit select, and I'm actually going to do it for eight hours and see how it looks. And that way I'm not wasting anything and just making something super cheap that's not normally cheap at the grocery store. I am now going to add the rice to my um, Oros con pollo. So, my broth has gone about five hours and I had to add a little bit more salt. So I already did that and taste tested it because you want to make sure that your um, broth is fully salted because once you add your rice, you don't get another chance. So I'm going to add brown rice. It is three o'clock. Brian gets home around 4.30, but brown rice takes a little bit longer. So I'm going to add 
two cups of rice. And let me show you what it looks like. That's what it looks like. It's been simmering all day. So since there's so much broth, I'm going to go ahead and pour the four, the two things of rice. There's my measuring cup. And I just cut a little bit of hole in my rice. That's one of those things that I did stock up on since I eat rice and beans so much. I try to stick to white rice, but I did, last time I was at Trader Joe's, I did get some, some brown rice medley. So I'm going to try that out. So here's one. And I actually think I'm going to go for one and a half because I don't want it to be too, I want it to be just enough that it sticks and it blooms completely because that's a lot of rice I stuck in there just now. So that way it will be delicious. And then I'm going to bring that up to a boil. Let's give it a quick stir. Bring it up to boil. And then I'm going to cover it. Uh, let it simmer for at least 25 to 30 minutes, and then I'm going to add my frozen peas. And this is the completed arroz con pollo. And um, we cannot wait to di dive into it, and this is going to last us probably till the end of the weekend. Unless Brian goes and gets like three bowls at a time. But, um... I will post the recipe uh, in the description, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This looks delicious. Thank you for watching Exploring with Sarah. Thank you. My stock is done, and I am starting to strain it. As you can see, the skin has floated to the surface. I've only taken out a little bit of liquid, but it... It went for like over eight hours, so what I'm doing, I do not own a mesh strainer, so what I did is I put a paper towel in my strainer, and I'm just getting the liquid first, and then as it gets down to everything, I'm going to change my paper towel. I'll do it like once or twice, well, sometimes three times, depending on how much stuff is in it and get all that amazing liquid out. So next time I wanna make a soup, uh, I need a gravy to make. I always have some in the fridge if I'm making some chicken. And um, you know, during these times here, if you do this with toilet paper instead of paper <laughs> towel, dude, this, this, this stock is gonna be worth gold, man. <laughs> you gotta invest in this. Do it with toilet paper, it will be worth gold. Look at the beautiful color of my broth. And I did boil this chicken before in, in my arroz con pollo recipe. But see how much beautiful color is still in there? It'll be even darker if you add carrots or celery or parsnips or whatever you have. I happen to not have any, so I just did what I had. But as you can see, mine is full and I still have some liquid. So what I do, it's still draining, it's slowing down a little bit. You see the fat kind of floats up here on the top. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to give you a close up view there. <laughs> the fat's kind of on the top, which is good. There's still going to be some fat in there. I'm going to get another one. See, this is all fat up right here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Trash can. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to continue to strain this. Uh, as you can see, I'm almost done. I'm about to get to the nitty gritty. Uh, but don't forget to like, comment, and please subscribe. We want to know what y'all think about all of the recipes that we're doing. And is there certain things that you would like me to try? I have a certain a list of stuff that I'm, I'm planning on making. But please, just tell me what 
What do you like me to try? You want me to do more Cuban food? You want me to do more Southern food? Let me know. And subscribe. Yep, let us know. Hit that red, red subscribe button. And the thumbs up button, too. And the thumbs up button. And uh, leave us a comment. You know, let us know your thoughts. And, um, uh, yeah, uh, keep surviving y'all's quarantines. We are. You know, we're hanging in there, hanging in strong. Hope you guys are hanging in strong as well. And, um, yeah, uh, keep it, um, keep it trucking. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you.